In today's video, I upgrade metal discs, create new shock absorbers, I produce new metal texture, some parts vanished meanwhile polishing, I try to not to destroy decals, however, I try to destroy seed, I paint orange, and lastly, I add some wires and pipes. Hello fellow modelers! I made my last Formula 1 model 6 years ago. It is shameful, therefore I have a need to create a new one and what else than legendary Lotus 79 Black Beauty. Hasegawa recently released limited version that includes extra metal details and fabric seat belts. It is humble plastic kit, the details are lovely but many of them are missing. However, I think after some minor improvements, we can build a decent model from it. I start assembling the model by removing parts out of the sprue with a sharp side cutters. This small brush is extra thin glue. The use is straightforward. I let the glue flow between the parts. It evaporates on air quickly, so you don't need to worry about details. The front shock absorbers are hidden inside of the model, so there is no need for modifications. I highly recommend removing all visible mode lines and ejector pin marks. They are not too deep or pronounced, therefore you can use only sandpaper in this case, otherwise some filler is essential. I mentioned that they are metal parts, the handiest are new radiator mesh and braking discs. And I am gluing these parts with a super glue. I know it looks unimportant from the above, but there is an empty space from the other side. Ok, now a few self-made improvements. I use micro drill bits for electronic boards from eBay. They are pretty sharp, so that you can use them as milling cutters. For example here, I'm making new holes into the air intake for brake schooling. You can also drill out new holes for exhaust pipes. The front wing is made from two parts and has a pronounced seam line. The good resilient and stable filler is flexible super glue. As you can see, the part of the wing is too thick, therefore I am removing plastic with a grinder. The same problem is with the back wing, but there are details on the surface and I want to preserve them. Therefore, I only bevel edges and this simple trick makes it optically thinner. Let's go back to the legendary Ford Cosworth DFV engine. It was one of the best engines ever made. Served for one decade and cars of this engine were for many years unbeatable. I wanted primarily to make the engine and the car around is of course less important. Not. There are decals for Ford letters if your hand is shaking. I want to add a few wires, therefore it's handy to drill holes into the distributor. The connection is then easier. I have lovely metal braking discs, but you can enchant them with a abraded texture. I am sticking it to double side tape and attaching it all to electric micro grinder. When the wheel is rotating, you can make realistic scratches with a sandpaper. The result is splendid. 
this technique is also great for pre-cut shapes. The back shock absorbers are more visible than the front ones. It is handy to modify them because the plastic ones from the kit are not satisfying. I use a drill bit of the inner diameter size, then I wrap a metal wire around it. Then use two different tubes and connect them. Do not forget to add a spring around. You can use hypodermic needles if you do not have a copper tubes. The difference is lovely. Now I am making artificial shading and details more pronounced of a dark enamel wash. I found and downloaded photo documentation and according to it I am making minor weathering effects like rust on the breaking discs. I use enamel paints for more dirt and dust, however I must try not to overdo it because it is not AAV obviously. The air intake cover mesh is from Metal Mesh, luckily, so an excellent replacement for horrible plastic imitation. However, if you do not have extra parts, you can shape the Metal Mesh according to plastic template. I have a lot of metallic paints, but I recently found it easier to use Mr. Color lacquer paints. They are resilient and the final effect is lovely. The seat texture should be more rougher, so let's destroy it with an aggressive thinner, which can melt down plastic. So for example acetone or nitrocellulose thinner or something like that. This limited version also has a fabric seat belts and metal buckles. The fabric parts are cell adhesive but the glue is not strong enough. Therefore you can fix it with a super glue. I think this detail is lovely. The instrument panel has a nice water slide decals, but there is a lack of a cover glass. You can create it with a clear varnish or punch a small part from a transparent plastic board. This technique is more realistic than clear varnish. Let's finish the details on the engine section. It came out from the kit pretty nice, however something is missing. Yes, many wires and pipes. I start with holes for spark plug wires. You can use lead wires, but if you have a thin wires for microelectronics, you do not need to paint them. Now I am making clear fuel lines from flexible jewelry fiber.
do not forget to connect wires to distributor. Now you can start the engine. I added only a few wires and the engine looks more impressive. Nonetheless, that was only the beginning, many more are required. I wanted to purchase extra hose joints, but then I realized that they are included in the kit, so I only recast them from resin. Some parts you must create from scratch, the residual sprue is always helpful material. I have some documentation, but it was hard to find all the connections. Therefore, I used the manual and photos from the expensive, super detailed Model Factory Hero Kit in 112 scale. The hose joints are stunning detail, because they are painted with a lovely metallic red and blue paint. I use for this color effect transparent paint. You can nicely see how many connections were needed to include. I use for braided lines with nice detail from Top Studio. They have many diameters for all scales, but unfortunately only is hard to get them because they are usually out of the stock. There should be a metal cover against heat from exhaust pipes. Unfortunately, it has a diamond texture. I struggled to find the correct imitation. Therefore, I made it from aluminum sheet and Excel cutting knife handle. The simple solution is usually the best. The front chassis should have a polished metal finish. The part is molded from black plastic, so the best is to polish it and then paint it with a super silver shade. Of course, you can paint it with a gloss black instead of polishing it, but the absence of a black layer makes the details sharper. The tires are from rubber, it is ok, but have a pronounced mold line in the middle. Try to remove it with a sandpaper. Here we need to paint the rims black first. I have a nice chrome and polished aluminum from AK, but chrome is too shiny, therefore aluminum suffice. I like alcohol based polishable metallic paints for paintbrushes. They are spraying metal masks for Goodyear logo, but they are useless, because the tire is round and the metal template not so much, therefore you cannot spray the logo sharply. Well, at least I am not capable of it. Therefore I prefer included decals. The advantage is that you can apply it to the correct position. The disadvantage is a clear film around, however a local fellow modelers advised me to soften varnish with a extra thin glue, 
you must be careful because you can easily destroy the logo. So try to apply the glue only on the edges. You can easily make a soft realistic weathering and make the logo partly damaged and abrade it. And finally shading with a dark wash, it will make the details optically deeper. I am also making the tire more abraded with a thick acrylic paint. The last but not least step is to paint the body. I use Gloss Mr. Paint which is lacquer based and an airbrush with a large 0.5mm nozzle. The Lotus 79 has a lot of gold logos and contours. Therefore, it takes some time to apply all of them. I prefer to use hot water around 60 degrees Celsius. It will make the decals softer and you prevent cracks. The setting is also more straightforward. I moved all to the needed position, so now I am fixing and softening decals with a special decal softer chemical. However, they are still a little bit raised above the surface, therefore I am spraying three thick layers of a clear varnish over. Now it is relatively safe to smooth decals edges with a sandpaper. Try to use a super soft sanding sponge or sandpaper with a 2000 or 3000 grit. We are sending until we do not see clear edges. The last step is polishing. I couldn't remove some scratches, so I sprayed highly diluted layer of a clear varnish over it. The black is the most difficult to polish, so I cheated a little. I am making backside mirrors from cell adhesive mirror wallpaper. And with these details we are done. I wanted to make something more unique from a standard plastic kit, so I performed a few minor improvements. You can consider if I manage it or not. I will place the model to showcase without the black body parts, because I primarily like naked version with a nice Ford engine. It is still black beauty, so maybe not. Ok, that's all for today. Thank you for watching and see you next time. Now, let's race.